Hello, this is Gilbert Cruz for Time.com, and we're here with John Mellencamp. John, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me. I interviewed Stephen King a couple weeks ago when he was here in New York for The Mist, and he talked about this musical you guys have been working on for a while, The Ghost Brothers of Darkland County. Mm -hmm. uh, why a musical? We just wanted to both do something that we had never done before. Somebody came to see a workshop, and uh, they said, it's the only musical you will ever like. It was for men. <laughs> so it, was a, it was a man's, you know, mm -hmm. this is a musical for men, if there is such a thing. How, how are you and Stephen King going to mesh together in your mentality to make this musical? If you think it's going to be Jack and Diane meets Cujo, you're wrong. <laughs> That's not it. <laughs> Stephen King and I are so much alike, it scares me sometimes. I wonder it's, if it scares you. Well, Steve lives in the middle of nowhere. I live in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> We're both antisocial. He's antisocial. I'm antisocial. I mean, there's an awfully good platform right there. And you're both hillbillies. And we're both hillbillies. You better believe it. You were nominated for a Grammy. You're here in New York to receive an award from ASCAP, the Songwriters Association. And from what I understand, it was announced today that you'll be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame next year. Now, specifically about the last one, you've been nominated two times before. This third time, you know, what was your thought process? There's kind of a little bit of either thinks. Well, I guess the last 35 years wasn't for nothing, you know. Uh, there's part of you that have that little thought in your mind. Mm -hmm. Somebody noticed, you know. But uh, for me, you know, being from the Midwest, and I've never really been part of the whole New York. You know, I know all those folks, but I've never really been part of it. So it didn't really, uh, uh, you know, dawn on me that I would ever get in anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, the fact that I was nominated the first year I was eligible was like, I, at that time, I thought, well, am I old enough to do that? You know, but it's pretty good, you know, for a kid who was in uh, a local rock band in Bloomington, singing in bars. The Grammy nomination was for your song, Our Country, which right. was a big brouhaha over last year because it was in a truck commercial, something that a lot of people thought ran counter to your idea in the past that you would never sort of put your songs and commercials. The reason there was such a brouhaha is that in my uh, cavalier days as a younger man, I made many <laughs> comments about supporting corporations mm -hmm. uh, and swore that I would never do it. But on the same token, I will have to refresh people's memories. In 1982, I had a song called Jack and Diane that people would walk up to me and go, if I hear that song one more time, I'm going to blow my brains out <laughs> because it was everywhere. You couldn't turn on the radio without hearing it. You couldn't turn on the TV without seeing it. And, you know, even I had to hide from it. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, God, there's a, I can't. Now, what is that, 30 years later, I walk out on stage, and if I happen to sing that song, I don't have to sing a word of it. It's become sort of a celebration amongst some people. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, you can't really look at what's happening in the moment because the moment really isn't it. You know, life is long and it's what happens after the moment. But ultimately and finally, it doesn't matter, does it? It just doesn't matter because the music business is not what it was supposed to be. The record company sold all of us people out, sold the artist out. And, you know, so the idea of what I thought was selling out in the 80s turned out not to seem like a sellout to me at all in the 2000s. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, uh, the record companies sold us out. Uh, as a singer-songwriter who sort of writes topical songs, like the one you wrote about Gina in Louisiana mm -hmm. uh, this fall, uh, are you still getting blowback? I get it all the time, you know. I'm not going to buy your records anymore. Mellencamp is too left-wing for me. Mellencamp has no business speaking out against the war. Part of being a singer-songwriter is having a voice and being able to speak for people who can't speak for themselves. And I take that responsibility seriously. I get ridiculed because I was against the war by people who profess to be religious. How does that work? Where does it say in the Bible, okay to kill? It doesn't say that anywhere. Now, they'll, they'll bring out a little piece that says, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That's not really what the Bible is about. Mm -hmm. It's not about revenge. It's not about hellfire and brimstone. The Bible is about compassion. People laugh at that. They think that's funny. 
I mean, Elvis Costello sang a song written by I think Nick Lowe. What's so funny about peace, love, and understanding? And it's the truth. So there's something wrong with the human spirit. And I don't think I'm going to solve it, but I am going to write about it. Mm-hmm. Are there people that you still have a, a list of in a back pocket somewhere? You say, I'd like to work with this person, sing with this person, do it with this person. Well, yeah, I probably shouldn't even say this, but uh, the one thing that I really want to do, and it's been suggested, is that I want to get with Bob Dylan and Bob and I are going to paint together. Because I'm a painter and Bob's a painter. Really? What do you paint? What do you mean, what do I paint? What do you paint? I came, I came to New York in 1974 to be a painter. Okay. And ended up getting a record deal. <laughs> no, my two heroes now are the, uh, this right now, are, are Bob Dylan and the Dalai Lama. Those are my two heroes. The Dalai Lama? Yeah, yeah. Have he you? held my hand for five minutes, man. Their big cultural center is in Bloomington, Indiana. And my wife uh, hosted the Dalai Lama every day at all these events. Mm-hmm. She was kind of like the uh, spokesperson for the center. <clears throat> and the Dalai Lama was, always saw me hanging around, but we never spoke, and, you know, hello. And I'm not a Buddhist. Um, anyway, he gave this great big speech to the university, and after it was over, I was standing backstage, and he comes up and he grabs my hand for like five minutes. And he's talking to everybody, holding my hand. And I thought, well, I kind of feel like his girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> and after it was over, everybody called up Elaine, and they were dying, laughing. They said, we've never seen him do that. And one of the uh, monks go, well, I think John needed rebooted. <laughs> <laughs> I, think they re- I think the Dalai Lama rebooted John. So I felt great about it.